name is Jennifer Fox, and I'm the director, writer, and producer of The Tale. The Tale is a story and a film that is squarely based in my memory and in the truth of what happened to me as a 13-year-old girl. It's also very much an investigation of how all of us create our identity through the stories we tell ourselves to survive. In order to talk about the tale and what's happening in the world now, I think we really need to look at history. As a Jewish American, I grew up hearing this phrase, never forget, which of course refers to the Holocaust. The concept in our culture is that if you remember what actually happened, you can prevent it in the future. Whether or not that's true, I think it's very, very important to place child sexual abuse as an issue squarely in history. Child sexual abuse is not something new. It's been happening since the beginning of recorded human history. It happens to boys and girls, and it happens across race, class, and color, and nationality. Everyone is potentially someone who can be abused as a child. I think what's exciting about the now and what we're facing today in the world is for the first time in recorded history, there's been a global outcry to talk about sexual abuse, to prevent it, and to help those of us like myself who are survivors heal. This is exciting. This is transformative. And we can truly make a difference now in this epidemic. I myself had a relationship with my track coach when I was 13 years old and he was 40. I called it a relationship from that time until I was about 45. As shocking as this is, it was only when I, as a filmmaker, was making quite a large series about women around the world which was not about abuse, not about trauma, and not about assault, but actually about freedom, that anecdotally so many women, no matter where they came from, and no matter what class, and no matter what color, told me stories of their assault, rape, or sexual abuse. It was so many, I believe it was closer to two or three women out of every five. It was so many for me and so overwhelming that I was shocked because I actually didn't think it was such a high incident. What also happened in hearing so many stories about sexual abuse is that the private story that I had told myself about my relationship with my track coach suddenly began to unravel because the sexual abuse stories I heard sounded just like what had happened to me in a sense, because there's this architecture of how sexual abuse happens, how adults groom children to pull them in and make them agree to do the unthinkable. So suddenly, making this other series, there was a light bulb or a kismic moment when I woke up and realized that I had been sexually abused and never actually faced that part of the story. Soon after this turning point and this awakening that in fact the relationship I had was actually abuse, I really decided that I would make a fiction film based on what had happened to me. In the next weeks and months, my mother happened to see the series I'd been working on and she echoed this feeling. In fact, as soon as she saw the series, she said, you have to make a film about your abuse. You have to get him. I told my mom that, in fact, getting him wasn't my purpose, but, in fact, I really wanted to understand why this had happened to me. This is just a side note, and I think we all have to acknowledge and allow that every survivor ha may have a different purpose. Some may not want to prosecute. Some may not want to prosecute. There's all sorts of manifestations. In my case, I decided to make a film. And in fact, my mother, 
knowing that this is how I understand the world by filmmaking really pushed me to do so. She was very, very clear that she wanted to do everything she could to help me and in fact sat with me for hours and hours and retaped our conversations and those conversations became the backbone of the mother-daughter journey that you see in the tale. And the words, 99% of them, that Ellen Burstyn is saying as Nettie, Jenny's mother, is actually directly from the transcripts that my mother and I did. What's very important to note that my mother, who is 90 years old, faced enormous criticism when she told her friends that her daughter was going to make a film about her sexual abuse. Many of her friends called her up and said, how could you let your daughter shame the family like this by becoming public about this horrible thing? To my mother's credit, she stood up to them one by one and said, no, this is important. This is the only way we can protect this from happening to other children and we can help survivors heal. My mother, even at 90, showed enormous courage. She and I were both clear that among the many, many things we wanted this film to do, we wanted it to break the shame of actually talking about sexual abuse and to take the shame away from the survivors like my, myself and put it squarely on the perpetrators. The more we speak openly, the more I believe that we can help mitigate these events from happening and again, help the suffering of other survivors by getting them to bring it out in the open and allow them to find support and healing. My mother and I really wanted this story to show just how complex child sexual abuse is, how it hurts not only the child but the family and the community and how perpetrators groom not only the child, but the family and community. We wanted audiences to see that it is absolutely not black and white the way you see in the media, but a child, amazingly, can even love the very person that hurts them, and that this love doesn't stop it from being child sexual abuse. I am very proud of my mom and the relationship that she and I had to build the film like this. Making the film The Tale was a long, long, arduous journey that I actually started in 2008, and the film wasn't released till 2018. I conceived of this film long before the Me Too movement and Time's Up and many of the events that has, have been a springboard for these issues into the world in the last two years. Everyone who helped make this film, from the producers and the gorgeous actors that appear in it, did so at high risk to their career because everybody felt this was a very taboo subject. They did so because they really believed in the film and the script and that these events had to be told in a fresh way and a more accurate way than ever before. Writing the script for the tale was a really interesting process that I think is illuminating. Originally, I wrote the script only in the backstory in the 1973 events of what happened to me and in the abuse. That was sort of year one of the writing process. I put that script away, and when I looked at it again, I realized that in fact it wasn't the story I wanted to tell at all, because it was so obvious, and in fact so horrible. But in fact, the story I really wanted to tell was what my mind had done with the abuse, and um, how memory served me as an adult. And so I began to uh, rewrite the film with this back and forth in time and in memory. Um, the film actually became much more about the story my child self told herself and myself as an adult to survive than it is about abuse. It is much, much more about the construction of self than it is about abuse. In my experience, no one in this life escapes without suffering. 
all of us suffer in one form or another. Of course, child sexual abuse is one of the most horrible things that can happen to anyone. The issue, though, in all suffering and in all trauma becomes how you deal with it. In my case, as a child, I was so set on survival and, in fact, um, not getting stuck in being a girl and the limits of girldom. Remember, I was born in 1959. I was told you could be a nurse, a secretary, a mother, and a wife. Uh, oh, yeah, an airline stewardess. So I was so sad as a 13-year-old not to get stuck in this event that I decided to tell myself the story that I was the hero of, of the events, that I chose to have this relationship and that I survived it and that it made me stronger. The narratives I told myself were about the fact that he loved me, uh, I was special, and look, I rose and he cried when I left him. If you see the film, you'll understand what these things made. Literally willing myself into a position where I would be strong to carry on and have the life I wanted. Even at that young age, all I wanted was to get out of the box of being a girl and be free. And in fact, what I really wanted is to travel the world, write, and make films. So that child created, constructed a story that would serve her. And even though it was only part of the truth, I have to say I'm very grateful for my child self for, self for saving me. What I learned in the writing of the script was in fact that the idea of being a victim at 13 would have actually hurt me, and again this is personal, would have hurt me more than the actual abuse itself that it was very important to me that I hold on to a sense of agency and will to get through what had happened to me. And in fact, it was only when I was 45 and I used the word sexual abuse for the first time that I could actually begin to admit that I had been betrayed or used or a victim at the hands of my coach. The only thing I understand from this is that, in fact, my identity was so fragile as a 13-year-old as to not to be able to tolerate this. And it was only in maturity with a stronger ego that I was able to accept the concept that someone had betrayed me to the degree that my coach had. So the film The Tale is really a dialogue between an adult self and a child self an adult self who's finally ready to see or re-see the events and the story that the child self told her. It's about a child who constructed herself to be a hero of an event because she couldn't tolerate seeing herself as a victim. What I learned in writing this story and in making the film is really surprising that I, in fact, at 13, was very smart, very intuitive, um, and a very together child. What we talk about when we talk about young girls um, is we seem to forget how intelligent they are, and young boys, how smart, how aware of the world they are. The problem isn't the intelligence that makes them susceptible to predators. It's that they don't have experience. And that is why children and teenagers need to be protected, not because they're stupid or flat or undefined, but because they don't have the experience to recognize what a predator looks like. This is why we need adults to watch out for children. What is important to see when looking at the tale is the very complexity of these events. How very complex it was, my feeling for my track coach, and the way he used his different stories and different approaches to reel me in, 
in order for me to accept the unacceptable. This is what we call grooming. And grooming is something that all of us need to understand if we're going to prevent child sexual abuse. The other thing that, again, is really important to look at is that predators build relationships with children and then prey on those relationships. They make them feel special, like my coach did, both my running coach and my riding coach. They make them feel loved. They fill in the gaps of people not listening to them and busy parents. Um, and through these relationships, again, they get to a point where a child can no longer say no to the unacceptable, which is sexual advances. When I let my coach continue to make sexual advances on me as a 13-year-old, I thought I was taking my life in my own hands. But ironically, I really didn't understand the repercussions of what was happening. And it's something that I've grappled with my entire life, and even more particularly now that I've acknowledged the abuse. What's really important with the tale and other stories like it is to talk about the complexity and nuance about how these events happen. That as a child, I could feel that I was loved by my track coach and my running coach and I could feel special from all the attention, and that they use this in order to manipulate me. The fact that I love them in no way mitigates the fact that they abused me. When we look to the future, what I hope is that we as human beings can tolerate complex storytelling that talks about the grays of human life. Because I think when we push our stories into black and white tellings or good and evil tellings, we actually miss the point. Reality li lives in the nuance, in the grays, in the complexity. And if we're going to understand how bad things happen, we have to look to these gray tellings and these gray events. And if we're going to help people heal, we also have to allow that they have very, very complex and ambiguous feelings about what happened to them. Unlike some forms of violence, sexual abuse isn't a clean wound. And I can speak from real experience. It's a bullet that shatters in you all over your body, and it takes years to pick out the shards, and the shards are not all the same. There's love, there's hate, there's desire, there's many things in there, and each person is different. But if we're going to be able to face it at all, we have to be telling ourselves three-dimensional and complex stories about what happened. And I believe this is true of everything, that really the fate of humanity rests on us being able to face the complexity of evil as it walks among us, and not as something separate from us, but something that we all take part in, and something that we all should be careful of, and learn to recognize in all of its very deep complexity. The future really rests in our hands. Thank you.